Hey guys, it's Con B, and today's video we're going to be doing another Rec Room Studio tutorial. This time we're going to be talking about how to use Rec Room's Interaction Canvas script, as well as how to set up a World Space Canvas in Rec Room Studio, and how to make buttons and toggles interactable, and You'll be able to link this up with your CV2 circuits. And it's just going to look a lot prettier than those green buttons that we're used to seeing in Rec Room. So I think it's really a great way to improve the quality of your room, make it look more professional, and so on. So yeah, let's go head over to Rec Room Studio and get started. And I'll just teach you some of the basics, but if you have any suggestions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment on this video and please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Rec Room Studio tutorials. All right, let's go. All right, so right now I am in a completely empty room. I do have a welcome mat though because you need that in order to be able to play the Rec Room Studio locally. So the first thing that I will do is I'm going to right click and add a canvas and drag that into my prefabs so let me delete some of these other prefabs that i have and we'll drag in this canvas and open it up so we work directly in the prefab so you'll see right now it's just a giant empty square we'll want to change the screen space from to world space because we don't want this to take up our entire screen we just want this to be a menu and we'll want to add a couple of components well, first we'll add the rec rooms object script and we'll need some sort of collider with that so i'll add a collider and we'll also want to add the rec room studio canvas interaction script the Rec Room Studio HUD canvas script would be for the screen space, but right now we're working in the world space. And let's uh, put in a button. So I'm going to add a button text mesh pro. So if you hit this drop down menu, you could change your text. So maybe we could use this to rotate an object. So I'll hit rotate. Go back to our button and we could change the sprite that we're using, which is the background image. You could have a custom one, you could edit it. I'm not going to go through all of that right now, but you could probably find some really good tutorials on YouTube. You could also change the color of the button as well as the material. You want to make sure that the button is interactable and your transition, if you want to show that the button's being pressed, um, right now it's, it'll show a tint of that color, but you could also do a sprite swap or an animation, but we'll just stick with color tint for now. All right, so for the on-click section, you'll want to drag in your canvas and go down to rec room object send circuits event string and we'll call this rotate button we'll also want to add to our button the rec room studio canvas interaction as well all right and lastly you'll just want to make sure that on your scripts that you click is interactable on both your button and your canvas. That's important. And you'll want to make sure that you remake your object board. And let's go ahead and hit play and see how this looks. All right, so we are in studio and you'll see this large button, which is still very large as well as our circuit board. And when we hit the remake uh, for the circuit board, it added this rotate button. 
So let's go ahead and go add a rotator. So we could show that the interaction is actually transmitting to CV2 circuits. If I hit this button, you'll notice that the tint occurs and you saw that the execution went through. And now we have a rotating <laughs> rotator, I guess. But yeah, if you wanted to create other events, you could do so with other buttons. Let's go ahead and go back to Studio and I'll show you how to use some other UI tools. All right, so now we are going to go back into our canvas. I'm going to remove the button, but I'm going to add a, should we do a slider or toggle? I'm gonna, you know what, let's just do a slider. Again, you can play around with all the different UI elements. I'm just going to show you how to use a couple of them. We'll go into our inspector and just open up these arrows. So basically, the slider, you could slide along this horizontal axis. And each point, you could assign a different execution. So let's make this slightly prettier. Add yellow. Our handle is the circle here. We can make it whatever we want. Let's see what I have saved. We will make it a heart. Why not? All right. Our fill is when we move our slider. What do we want the, the filled bar to look like? For now, I'm going to create, I guess, a red. So, yeah. So now we have on our slider, there's this value. And it, right now it's between zero and one, and it is a float variable. You could change this if you want to say whole numbers. And what do we want our max value to be? We can make it five. So each time it ticks along until you get to five, you get these executions that happen. And similar to what we did with the button, we'll want to do an on value changed, drag in the canvas, <clears throat> do rec room object, and we'll want to send the circuit event string, and we can hit slide, as well as editing the rec room studio canvas interaction script. Now, if we go to our canvas, which is our parent object, we could also add exposed properties, and this way we could see what number we hit along the slider. So are we at one, two, three, four, five? We'll call this slider value. And I'm going to drag the slider and hit slider. And we'll want to go to value. So this will show us and give us that as an output so we could use that number to set off certain events. Let's go ahead and hit save. And again, we'll want to make sure that we remake our object board and let's hit play. All right, now that we are in Unity, we have our circuit board as well as our toggle. And what you'll see is if I hold down and move this toggle, it moves in those five segments that we set up. 
and we also have uh, two ports right here. One is for the slide execution and the other is for the value. So we could say, let's set up another rotator. And we could say, if our value is one that we want it to play, if our value is two, we want it to stop. So we could do an if chip and equals chip. And again, this is just an example. You could do so much more with this. And we will connect and say if this value equals one, and we change the value, then we want to hit play. And we could just duplicate this and say if our value is two, then we want to stop. All right, all right. So right now we're going to ignore the other inputs. And I did forget to mention that the first input should be actually zero. So we have six inputs here. So we'll put this to two and we'll see the rotator does stop. And we're at one and it's going. So you could see how this could be useful that you could have a slider value and each of those sliders will have a different execution. You know, this would be also good if you were using audio and you wanted to raise or lower the volume. This would be a good use of the slider UI. All right, one last thing that I want to mention that you could do in Studio. If you add an event to your canvas and make it a bool, so true or false event, we could say slider on, and this is going to be able to either show the slider or not show the slider, which could be helpful if you're working with multiple menus. All right, so we'll want to add a Unity event, a true or false event, a bool. And we want to drag in our canvas and go to Game Object, Set Active. And we could call this Slider Show. And then probably not the best name, but that's okay. Go back, hit Save. Uh, remake our object board. And let's go hit play and I'll show you how it works. So now you'll see on the circuit board, we have this true and false. And what we could do is say, if this is true, then we wanna show our slider. If it's false, we don't. So let's go for testing purposes. We'll just have a, another button over here and we'll hook this up and we'll set this to true. So if I hit true, it's showing. If I hit false, it disappears. Um, again, you could set this up to make sense and use in your game, but for now, I'm just showing you how it works and how to show and not show the buttons which you may not want to show for certain points of your game. All right, so I hope this video and tutorial helped you out. If it did, please leave a like, subscribe, and I'll continue to do more tutorials. Hopefully this helps you just to get started with UI and it really just touches the surface, this tutorial. So 
yeah, tr test out the other UI elements and use them in your games. And yeah, think of all the possibilities you could do now that you could send events and different elements out using the canvas in Unity. That's all for today. I'll see you guys later.